ASU lost big to Oregon this past weekend. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, flush it, and move on on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. As always, thanks so much for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. And a special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You, of course, can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at Richie Brad 36 the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today will be a double feature episode. This is going to be a very brief one because quite frankly, this is not a game that I feel we need to go super in depth on because there's a lot more bad than there was good in this game. So we're going to break this game down. Then we are later today going to start hate week. If you don't know what hate week is, you must be new here. Hate Week is well documented at this point. It's not a locked on Sun Devils thing. It is an ASU versus the team down south thing. So the whole week is going to be dedicated to Hate Week. But of course, we still need to break down this game at least a little bit. And that's what we're going to do on this very brief uh, podcast. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. The good from this game. Uh, second half. Second half, the Sun Devils really started to put everything together. They were getting some stuff done offensively that looked really good they were able to uh get get a couple of turnovers uh, uh via interception you had one from ed woods you had one from keith abney it was not the prettiest game in the world for sure but you definitely were happy with what you got to see in the second half from the team is they looked like a team that at no point in time had quit and wanted to move on flush the game the way that we're going to these guys are so dedicated every single minute that they spend on the field they at no point in time this year have rolled over on their backs quit and wanted to move on rather they have sat there they've gone blow for blow and like a famous randy marsh just said i didn't hear no bell that's them they are constantly fighting and that was very evident in this game, they didn't pull starters. They didn't sit there and run the football to bleed the clock out. No, they were still throwing the football. They were they were still trying to be aggressive offensively. They had trick plays with Jalen Conyers, with Cameron Scadaboo. They were doing everything they could to get the ball into the hands of their playmakers like Elijah Badger. They, they truly did their best for a full 60 minutes. A lot of previous teams in the in the Arizona State Sun Devils era of like Herm Edwards and late season Todd Graham, some of the Dennis Erickson teams, they did not want to put a full effort in if they were getting blown out like this. Instead, you look at this team and you would have thought it was like a really tight one possession game, the way that they were still playing with an intensity for the whole game. So you have to give them credit for that. They did quite a few things right in the second half. They uh actually outscored Oregon in the second half, 13 to seven. So if you only count the second half, ASU did beat Oregon. So take it for what it is. Uh, yeah, that's that's about the, the amount of good that came out of this game. There was quite a bit of bad. And it really starts with just allowing the big play. And this is something that I discussed going into the week was you you could not allow the big plays to happen. Oregon is shop full of them, right? There's Troy Franklin, there's Tez Johnson, there's Bucky Irving, there's their tight end um uh god, I can't remember his name. But they they've got a litter of guys who are able to make big plays. And of course, you've got Heisman front runner Bo Nix as well, who was guiding that offense. And I mean, they just did a lot of great things defensively. They did a lot of great things as well. Um, they were able to uh, create a lot of pressure on the quarterback, even if they didn't get any sacks. It, it's been the case this year, but I mean, 
Oregon just plays with such a ferocious, what's it called, intensity. And you saw that in the first half. It was 42 nothing in the first half. They completely shut down everything the Sun Devils tried to do offensively. They were suffocating. They weren't allowing the big plays. It was, it was not a fun time for the Sun Devils at, as a whole, offensively, defensively, special teams. They missed a field goal. Like, this was just a bad, bad game overall for the Sun Devils. A lot of bad here. The biggest good that you can take out of it was, you know, those guys never gave up. They tried their best, all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, this was definitely a game that you really just want to flush, move on from, and try try and take whatever positives you can. I know that they're going to continue looking at the film and whatnot, but as for us, we're definitely going to be moving on and getting ready for the next step. Listen up, college students. I got to tell you about our friends over at listening.com. Why don't textbooks and research papers come with audio versions? Wouldn't it be amazing if you could listen to it like an audiobook? Well, now you can. Listening.com is an app that turns any academic reading into audio. It can pronounce difficult technical words, read math equations, and even knows to skip the citations and the footnotes. If you go to listening.com slash locked on, you'll be able to get your first three weeks for free. Normally, it's two weeks for free, but thanks to their special offer with Locked On, you can get your first three weeks for free. Again, go to listening.com slash locked on to get started. Also want to talk to you guys about our friends over at FanDuel. You know that I am a big FanDuel guy myself, and FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. It's a really easy app and a wide variety of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Let's go ahead and talk about the flush it and move it on uh, part of part of what we need to do for this game. Because it was 100% a game that there was very little positives to take out of it. And it just needs to be a game that you, you move on from. You know, this is kind of the case last year. Second to last game of the year, Oregon State came to Arizona State. They kicked the crap out of them. And then you had to flush it and move on. You had to get ready for hate week. You had to get ready to go down to Tucson to play that team down south. It, uh, it wasn't easy to deal with a big loss and then have to immediately move on. But that's what the Sun Devils are just going to have to do. Because you can't sit here and stew on it and, you know, just be upset and let it affect your preparations going into this week. You know, that's something that Kenny Dillingham is really focused on is, you know, going over tape on Monday, figuring out where they can be better and all that good stuff, and then preparing Tuesday through Friday to be ready for the next game, to be ready to take on whatever is going to end up coming up for this team. They are a very well-coached team, and you've seen that this year. Now is the time where it's going to be put all together to figure out how you are going to attack, to attack the way U of A plays football games. We're going to talk about them plenty this week. They've got a lot of different weapons. They've got all sorts of different things they can do offensively and defensively. You just got a taste of arguably the best offense in the Pac-12, one of the five best offenses in the nation. Hopefully there's a lot that you can take out of this game to move forward and try to get better with it. This was, for all intents and purposes, a butt weapon. But there's nonetheless things that you can still take out of this game to try and get better, to move on, and to really use to make you a better football team. There is stuff there. You got to love the intensity they played with. You got to love the ability that they had to be able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers and Scadaboo and Conyers and Badger. They leaned on those guys this week. They let them do all sorts of different stuff. You had Scadaboo throw the ball six times, albeit not overly successful. He ran it eight times. He averaged almost six yards per carry on the ground. Uh, he was able to get one catch for six yards. So 
let him touch the ball a lot. Jalen Conyers, yes, he only had two catches for 38 yards, but he had six carries for 34 yards. So they're they're getting him the football. Elijah Badger, seven ca- or carries, seven catches, 64 yards. Arizona State understands that getting the ball into their playmaker's hands is going to be pivotal for their success moving forward. You love to see their they am figuring out their offensive identity this year. They know who they are. They know what they want to be. Now's the time to take the culmination of the 11 games you've played this year and use it to hopefully get another win in the Territorial Cup Series, which ASU has owned for the last 20-plus years. Again, we'll be talking about it a lot more in detail the whole week, including later today. So if you want to stay in touch with all of that, make sure that you hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. We're free and available all day, every day. I appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in. You can find me on Twitter if you want to talk to me. If you want to drop a comment on YouTube, you totally can. You can find me on Twitter at RichieBrads36, the podcast as well, at LO underscore Sun Devils. I will see you guys in just a few short hours to start hate week. Till then, keep it locked right here 